Welcome back to Android Digest. My name is Zach and it is a awesome time to review a phone because hey, we're all quarantined, so why not? So I had a phone that came in the mail a few days ago. It actually came out and came to me before the release. So I've had some time to test this phone and I'm excited to tell you about the Moto G Stylus. Now, the Moto G Stylus did release for $299. It has 128 gigs of storage. It has a 48 megapixel camera, four gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 665 processor. So very promising specs for $300. And you'll see as well the Moto G Power. This is the 2020 version of the Moto G Power. That phone also did release at $249 with the same processor, the same RAM, the same display, 6.4 inch display with a good resolution. So almost everything is identical in the Moto G Stylus and the Moto G Power. There's just a few differences which I'll go over in this review. I wanna let you know which phone you should look to buy depending on who you are. But I also wanna spend some detailed time giving a review to you on the Moto G Stylus. You know, I've had this phone, like I said, for almost a week now, and I wanna give you my detailed impressions of it and the highs and the lows of the phone and what I think. So with all that being said, let's get it started and let's get this review going. So here I have the box of the Moto G Stylus, and I just wanna mention really quickly, there is not a case that comes in the box. I know Motorola has done that in the past, but there's no case that comes in the box and there's really nothing special that does come in there. The phone is obviously in the box and you also have here a 10 watt fast charger. So this phone does support fast charging, but it does not support very fast charging if that makes any sense to you. Now, if we take a quick look at the design of this phone, you're going to see a hole punch in that corner, which is where the front facing camera is. And you'll see very small bezels. You'll see a nice speaker there up top, which is very loud by the way. You'll see small bezels on the bottom. You'll see on the very bottom of the phone, you'll see a USB-C port. Again, a very loud speaker. I absolutely love the speaker on this phone. You'll also see here a headphone jack and you'll see the stylus, which you have to use your fingernail to take it out. So it is a little bit difficult to get out for some people, I'm sure, uh, but it is nice and secure. It goes in and out one way. You can't flip it around back and forth. It doesn't just pop in and out. Again, you will have to use your fingernail, but it is nice and secure. And when you do pull it out, it does pop up with a nice little menu on your screen with some little apps you can program it for. Now the left side of the phone, it does have a micro SD card slot, which you don't really need because this phone comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. The top of the phone has really nothing to see, no big deal. And the back of the phone, it's really a cool color. It's very similar to the Motorola One Action that came out. And you have the fingerprint sensor right here on the Motorola symbol. And of course the camera's here. It's a pretty cool design, but what I will mention is you can definitely get a lot of scratches on the back of this phone. I found the same thing with the Motorola One Action. You know, I just had this phone on my kitchen table putting on a screen protector. And at the end of it, I was shocked to find that I had scratches on the back of my phone. Now, I don't know if I had a crumb or two on the table or what, but just keep in mind that you are gonna wanna get a case on this phone. Otherwise, the back will probably get scratched up. Now, looking at the display of this phone, this is the same display you're gonna find in the Moto G Stylus and the Moto G Power. So they do share the same display. It is a 6.4 inch display and it's 2300 pixels by 1080 for the resolution. So it's a very nice display, a good resolution. And what I found as well, this phone has very good brightness levels. So when I was driving around, I was testing my GPS. I didn't really find it hard to see the screen even in daylight. Now you may have different opinions on that depending on how bright you want your screen, but I did think it was a little brighter than phones like the Pixel 3a or the 3a XL. So comparing it to other phones, I thought the brightness level was a little higher on this. And I think the screen is pretty good overall. Now, as far as performance, this phone and again, the Moto G Power, they share the same processor. They share a Snapdragon 665 and four gigabytes of RAM. So this phone performs very smoothly overall. I didn't have a ton of issues with performance. And if you're trying to compare it to phones, from my experience at least, I believe this phone is a little faster than the Moto G7 from last year. 
but it is a little slower than a $400 phone, or at least it was $400 on release. It is a little slower than a phone like, let's say the Pixel 3a or the Pixel 3a XL. So even when I think of that idea, I think this phone fits in very well at $300. And I would argue that you could price this phone a little higher considering the fact that it does come with a stylus and not a lot of phones have that. So I think this phone is priced well and I think it performs very well for the price. It's fairly smooth. As I opened up different apps, I didn't really see a lot of hiccups. And I think your average user is going to find this phone performs very well for them. Now there was one performance issue that I did run into that I quickly want to mention. And I do think this is more software related. So when I'm opening up an app, let's say I have ESPN open. And when I swipe it close and I quickly try to open another app, I quickly try to move pages. I try to do pretty much anything when I'm closing this app. I really have to wait almost a full second before I can do anything else. So let me give you a quick example here. So I swipe up here and then I try to swipe up again to view my apps. It doesn't work. Now I can swipe up, my apps are viewed, right? But if I'm closing an app and then I try to swipe up, it takes almost a full second for me to be able to swipe up my apps. Now the reason why I think this is software related and I don't think it's a processor issue is because if I do that same thing but I swipe up from the bottom, it does allow me to view my recent apps immediately. But it will not allow me to switch to my Google page on the left side. It will not allow me to do things like, like I said, to open up my apps again. So I think this is more software related. I'm hoping that's fixed with a software update. So just keep that in mind. Now moving on to the battery, this phone has an incredible battery and you may be wondering if you should get the Moto G Power or if you should get the Moto G Stylus. Well, the Moto G Power has a 5,000 milliamp battery, which is huge. This phone has a 4,000 milliamp battery. Now, if you're just wondering if your average user is gonna get through the day on this phone, absolutely. Not only that, but I used my phone like crazy. I was using it for six, seven, eight hours of screen time, and I got through the entire day without needing a charge. So I think your heaviest users will still not even need to plug in at the end of the day. You will end up with at least a few percent because on my very heavy usage days, I still made it to the end of the day with around 10% of battery left. And on days I didn't really use my phone that much, I ended the day with around 30 or 40% even. So my screen usage was around six and a half hours to eight hours of screen time. And this phone, I tell you, has a fantastic battery. So if you're considering this or the Moto G Power, I'd again, I tell you, it really depends on what you prefer. If you like a stylus, this phone has a great battery anyway. So spend the extra 50 bucks, get a stylus, and I will mention this a little later, but the Moto G stylus has a slightly better camera than the Moto G Power. But if you're just a huge battery hog, look, why not get the Moto G Power, of course, if you don't need the stylus. At that point, the only thing you're really losing is a little bit of a worse camera, but the Moto G Power is a great phone at $249. So these are just some things you have to weigh when you're comparing the phone. So when we talk about the camera of the Moto G stylus, I'd say it really depends on your expectations. The Moto G Stylus has a good camera. If you compare it to a phone like the Google Pixel 3a or the Google Pixel 3a XL, you're definitely gonna lose. I mean, the Pixel 3a, the Pixel 4a that comes out soon, those phones are going to be the king of the mid-range and the iPhone SE that looks to release, I guess that phone will probably fall in that camp as well. But I remember when the LG Stylo 5 released and it released at $300. It had a slower processor, it had worse RAM, and the camera was not good at all. Well, this phone has a much better camera, and from my experience, I really enjoyed using it. I did get some very good shots of my daughter. I do think the camera looks good. It looks much better, so I was really thinking doomsday scenario with the camera, and it was not that at all. It also comes with a cool macro camera, which really lets you zoom in on very close objects so if you want to zoom in on a quarter or something you could do that and it'll work very well you could also record video you know have your phone in portrait mode but it will record in landscape mode which is a really big thing if you're wanting to post to social media i know people are looking for you know devices to record in landscape mode 
So if you're looking for my camera opinion, I'll just quite simply say it's good, it's not great. You have a 48 megapixel camera in this phone, and this camera is, again, a little bit better than the Moto G Power. You won't lose a ton. You will lose some megapixels when you go with the G Power. You won't lose a ton as far as the camera. It's still a good camera with the Moto G Power, but if you are looking for the better camera, the Moto G Stylus is gonna be slightly better. Now let's talk about the stylus, okay? So this stylus works very similarly to styluses like the LG Stylo or maybe the Galaxy Note, where as soon as you pull it out, it does pull out this cool menu. But one way this stylus is a little different is that this stylus does not support palm rejection. This means that if I have one note open, it's not automatically gonna detect that I have the stylus on there, okay? So I will actually have to manually press that I wanna use a stylus. And even when I do that, it's not gonna know the difference between the stylus and my hand. So if I'm trying to go up and down and scroll on this page, it's just gonna color like it's a stylus. Well, that's a real bummer. I know other phones have that palm rejection feature like the Galaxy Note. I also know that that feature is available on devices like the Galaxy Tab S6. So when I think of a stylus, what's the real benefit of having this? compared to just buying a $10 stylus on Amazon. Well, the only real benefit is that, well, it is pretty cool and you can tuck it away, but outside of that, as far as actually using it, there's not a huge benefit. I could buy the Moto G Power and palm rejection isn't supported anyway, so I could just pull that stylus out and I could buy any capacitive stylus on Amazon, it would work just fine. I mean, yeah, if you have a G Power and you buy your own capacitive stylus, it's not going to pull up the apps as soon as you pull out the stylus. So that's the only software feature that you really are losing if you don't have this specific stylus. So that is one thing that did disappoint me with the stylus, the fact that it didn't support palm rejection. But I will say this stylus does work really well. It's actually one of my favorite styluses that I've really used in a phone. And I would say, man, it just works great. It feels really good on the screen and the little mesh stuff or whatever is on the end of this, uh, it just feels great when I'm drawing with it. Now, as far as special features with this phone, I will say it does have fast charging like I mentioned, but it's not really that fast. It does not have wireless charging, but man, I will say the speakers are fantastic on this. That is one of the highlights of the Moto G Stylus. It just has fantastic speakers, which is great for entertainment. Now, I am seeing some confusing information regarding water resistance. Now. This is something that I haven't heard back from Motorola on, so just keep that in mind. But it does say it's IP68 certified. If you go to Best Buy, you go to the specs, it does say it's IP68 certified, but I'm seeing a lot of reviewers say that it's really not water resistant or it's not waterproof. Well, IP68 certified means it is dust and water resistant, so I'm not seeing what they're seeing. I am glad to see the IP68 certification seems to have come to this device, but again, maybe Best Buy is listing it incorrectly. So just keep that in mind. There is a little bit of back and forth information that I'm seeing that I haven't confirmed yet. Also, one feature that I should mention, this phone does not have NFC. That may be a deal breaker for some of you. That means you can't use Google Pay. The Moto G Power also does not have NFC. And I know if you're in the US and you've really been getting used to Google Pay, that may stink. And you might have to find some type of watch like you know a fitbit that has fitbit pay or something like that to get around it uh, but if that is a deal breaker for you i'm sorry it's what it is all right so here's where the rubber meets the road and you need to decide if this device is worth buying and if it's worth spending 300 dollars on first let me talk to the people out there who are considering buying the mono g power and you really don't know if you should buy the g stylus or the g power and you're really confused the Moto G Stylus and the Moto G Power, they share the same display, they share the same processor, they share the same RAM, they share the same charging, they both have a headphone jack, so the dimensions of the phone are almost identical. They almost weigh the exact same, the Moto G Power just weighs slightly more. The Moto G Power has 1000 more milliamps in the battery, so you will have better battery life on the Moto G Power. The Moto G Stylus has a little bit of a better camera. It has a 48 megapixel camera. And the Moto G Stylus also has a stylus, of course. So which phone should you buy? 
Well, this is a really close call. If you want a better battery, you will go with the Moto G Power. But on the other end, this phone has such a good battery that I don't think you need the battery of the Moto G Power if you're an average user. But if you're sitting there and you're like, well, I don't need a stylus. I am never gonna use a stylus. Well, if you're not gonna use a stylus, you should probably save the 50 bucks. Yes, you are gonna go to a lower megapixel camera, but outside of that, you're gonna get a better battery for it and you're gonna save 50 bucks. But if you're someone that's going to use the stylus, I think that's really the big decision maker here. If you want to use a stylus, just get the Moto G stylus. If you have an LG Stylo 5, you just need to upgrade. Now, if you don't have the money and $300 is too much, of course, don't upgrade. You don't have the money and that's fine. I know these are crazy times, but if you're looking for the best phone, the Moto G Stylus has a better camera by far. It has a far better camera than the LG Stylo 5. This has four gigs of RAM. The LG Stylo 5 has three. This has a way faster processor. The Snapdragon 665 is much faster than the LG Stylo's processor, which is the Snapdragon 450. The battery is also bigger in the Moto G Stylus than it is in the LG Stylo 5. So is there really any reason to buy the LG Stylo 5 over this? And honestly, I'd say no. You might wonder if the Moto G Stylus compares well to the Galaxy Note 9 or the Note 10 or whatever. And I'll honestly say no. The Galaxy Note is still king. If you could find it on sale for six or $700, it is a great phone. It will perform better. It will have NFC. It will have all the cool fancy features you want and you need. And I'll say the stylus is gonna be a little better in the Galaxy Note series. But when we're talking about affordability here, this is fitting in at the price point of $300. If you're out there today and you're watching this video and you want a phone that has a stylus and that is a necessity to you and you're looking around the $300, $400 price point, this is definitely the phone for you. I would say this phone is a very good value at $300 and you're gonna see some sales off and on. If you activate a phone, you're gonna see some minor sales. This is going on sale through some carriers. So this is a great value at $300 overall, especially if you want a stylus. Now you should not buy this phone if you would be super annoyed with that one second glitch where if you're minimizing an app, it takes a second before you could do much of anything. That may annoy you. Hopefully they fix that with a software update, but that may annoy you enough. And hey, if you need NFC, you may need an FC, that may be a deal breaker for you. Those are really the two things. And I guess the third thing that was a negative about this phone was the fact that the back got scratched up so quickly. I'm talking within 10 minutes of me having the phone, just putting it on a table that may have had a, a crumb or two, maybe. I didn't see anything on the table that could scratch it. And there were scratches all over it. You know, there were scratches on the camera lens, there were scratches all over the back. So that is a really unfortunate thing that I just got it and it was getting all scratched up before I could really even do anything. But hey, if you're gonna get a case, if you're gonna protect it well, and you really want a stylus phone, this phone will perform well for the money. It has a fantastic speaker, it has good performance, a fantastic battery, and a good camera. So for $300, I think it fits in great at that price point. Now, Motorola has been known not to give updates every two years. They typically only give one year of updates, like big Android updates on a phone, but the software is very clean. It is straight Google. They don't have a ton of blowware on the phone. So that is another plus. So all these factors have to be considered, but overall, despite some things that honestly bug me a lot, I don't think I'm gonna keep the Moto G Stylus myself. That's mainly because I've really gotten used to a lot of more expensive phones, but for $300, it is a good deal, and I definitely think you should consider it um, if those small things I mentioned don't bug you too much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you already have. If you have not, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. We have grown very rapidly on this channel. We are up to over 2,500 subscribers, and for you noobs out there who don't care, you know what, that stinks for you, but hey, my family greatly appreciates your support as we grow this channel and as we give you more great content and we will continue to do so. So have a great week. Thank you so much and please stay safe. It is crazy out there. Stay safe and have a wonderful week.